The Philips CDI was known for being one of the worst video game consoles to ever exist. But maybe I could change your mind just a little bit. I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games. And today I bring you guys the world's first video review of Lords of the Rising Sun for the CDI. Second Opinion Games. Lords of the Rising Sun is a real-time strategy game where you spend hours staring at a map of Japan. Now, it doesn't really sound like that much fun, but trust me, it gets really addictive really fast. I believe it was first made on the Amiga, and the CDI port is very similar. The colors might be a little bit different. The sound effects also slightly changed and the graphics were toned up very slightly. But the video compression is a much better and overall it's just a more enhanced version of the game. It was also released on the PC Engine CD or TurboGrafx CD or Turbo Duo depending on what you have. But the best version is definitely on the CDI. We'll come back to the TurboGrafx CD version a little bit later. So at the very start of the game, you could pick between one of two real-life warlords in the 1200s in feudal Japan, Yoshisumi or Yoritomo. I strongly recommend you pick Yoritomo because then there are different mini-games that you could play out as the game progresses. If you pick Yoshisuni, well, then you just stare at the map of Japan the entire time, and trust me, you will go freaking nuts if this is your decision. But, you know, it's up to you, depending on how you want to play the game. So when you start up the game, assuming that you decide to pick Yoritomo, you're black and have little white squares on the inside. Now your main character has a little gold dot above your flag, which means your brother, Yoshisuni, is the exact opposite of you. White with the little black squares, with that little gold dot at the top of his flag. Focus in on him, because if you kill a warlord and his underling warlords will suddenly become your warlords, increasing your army size dramatically. So right off the start, you could go from having three warlords up to five. And trust me, you're going to need every single one of them in order to protect everything going on on this map. Because you don't just travel by land here, you could even get on boats on different ports and shortcut your way around. So trust me, your enemies will take boats to claim unprotected castles from across the map. So you always have to leave a general or two behind in order to protect different areas of the map. Which gets really frustrating because these people just bounce all over the place. Luckily, they often fight each other though, so sometimes you could track them down when they're weakened and kill them pretty darn quick. So let's start going over some of the other mini games here. Now you only go into these mini games when Yoritomo himself triggers them. So the first one we're going to talk about is Horseback Pursuit. If you happen to defeat a warlord in a massive battle, well then you could track him down to kill him once and for all. It's an isometric view with actual music playing. However, when you swing your sword, well, the music cuts off kind of awkwardly. Also, what's awkward is the controls. They're really stiff. Button 1 swings to your left and button 2 swings to your right. And you have to be ungodly precise in order to kill any of these soldiers on the map. But if you do, well, they will make a death sound, and your sword will now be covered in blood. I also gotta give them props for the blood, because at the time, it was pretty much uncalled for. And after all, this is a pretty bloody realistic game. If you do a really good job, well then you will track down that warlord and just you're better off running into him, killing him. Of course, you will fall off your horse and sustain some wounds yourself. Also, if you hit any bumps along the way, you're going to fall off and risk dying. So be very careful on these because sometimes your enemies will actually hide in front of trees and it's just not worth going after them. Just let them go, okay? 
Then we might as well talk about the battles themselves. You have archers and swordsmen. Pressing a button can make them either run towards your pointer or away. Pressing both buttons at the same time switches between whether or not you're communicating with your archers or your sword guys. Now, usually these battles practically play themselves. Whoever has the bigger army usually wins. If your armies are the same size, you'll pretty much always take a thrashing. So be careful here because it's really not not worth losing. I usually send one of my lesser warlords to weaken up someone and then I go in myself for the kill. This is usually the best way of doing this and then of course you trigger that horseback riding event and you have your shot at destroying that warlord. Now, before you actually go into the battle, though, you can request them to just straight up surrender and become one of your allies. Usually, they'll say no unless they are on their last leg. And I mean one person left, and then they'll say, yeah, I might as well, otherwise I'm pretty much dead. And then you gain another warlord. Park him at a castle of yours until their army becomes huge, and you have yourself a valuable ally. Now make sure you save often because you have one life here and when you die it's game over. Now you could also hire a ninja to kill some of the other generals on the map but pretty much always they kill the ninja and then you are forced to commit ritual suicide because you are now disgraced. Also they could hire a ninja to come after you and this is one of the best parts of the entire game. This ninja is really menacing. So when he jumps jumps out from the right side, you guard to your left. When he jumps out on the left side, you guard to your right. If he's all the way in the back, hold your sword straight up and down, right down the middle. Now, what I really like about this part is the way that the ninja starts. Deflect off your sword, and it is always intense. Because if that ninja takes you out and you haven't saved in like four hours, well, it gets really intense really quick. And I love how you're basically forced someone else to commit suicide when you finally take out this ninja. And it's just a lot of fun. You can expect to see about two to three of these events throughout the game before you end up beating it. Now, sieging the castle is something that's really kind of boring. Button 1 controls your sword, and button 2 controls your bow and arrow. You are a lone soldier running through the castle, but not really alone. You kind of have to use a little bit of imagination here. Every time you get hit, one of your men dies from your army. So if you try to raid a castle with almost no one, well, after a couple seconds, the scene will be over, and you will be forced to retreat. So I recommend only invading a castle with with a ton of freaking people. Also, if you happen to die here, well, it's game over. Like I said, one life. You can retreat from the main entrance just the way you came, so that is always an option. Also, there is a princess hidden in one of these villages, so you could save her and then run towards the exit. However, if she gets hit by an arrow or something, she will die. And yeah, that really sucks, because if you manage to get her out, then you'll get a special prize. I believe she gives you a mirror. There's also other things like a special sword or even the emperor himself might give you some sacred scrolls if you happen to capture enough castles. Basically these are hidden trophies throughout the game. They don't really change much of the gameplay. They're just something really cool to find. So there's that as well. Now if you're at a castle, why one of your enemies try to siege it? Then you can protect the castle in one of the best minigames on here. And you are a bow and arrow guy just trying to pick off the people. Now this isn't super precise, matter of fact it's darn right difficult unless you know how to actually do this. Now every once in a while a warlord will ride his horse back on the very very back and if you manage to kill him, well it's over right then and there. There for that warlord he is dead and taken off the map completely but this is pretty much impossible I've only ever done it like two or three times ever so I wouldn't even try for it draw back your string on your bow wait for them to come down to the very last section 
when they jump over that last fence, let go and you will kill the person every time, as long as you hit them in center mass. And you could wipe out a whole army in just a few minutes here, and then you could leave the castle to track them down to kill them with the horseback pursuit and the battles all in all. So this is actually one of the best ways to defeat any general in the entire game. So if the CDI version is too slow for you, well, you could always grab the TurboGrafx CD version, where everything is speeded up about 10 times on the main map screen, which is now really zoomed in. All the graphics in this game are much better. All the controls are much better. However, the game itself is made a lot harder, and speeding up everything 10 times over actually makes the overworld map scene really horrible to actually play. You're continuously getting interrupted, you can't focus on anything, and even though the controls are better on all the mini games, they're made far more difficult to compensate. So basically, the TurboGrafx CD version is a total mess. It is garbage on almost every single level and is nearly unplayable. Meaning this is one of those really weird occasions where the CDI, a system known for being a huge turd, has a better game than the Turbo Graphics, which is a system that everyone loves. And that's just freaking amazing. Now I'm not saying that you have to rush out and buy a CDI just to play this one single game. It's actually quite playable, which is better than almost every game for the CDI. And matter of fact, it's actually pretty good, and it's definitely in the top 10, if not at the very top itself. The graphics are pretty decent, the video compression actually looks nice, and if you happen to have one of the versions of the CDI that doesn't have the video card installed, well it still plays totally fine so you don't have to worry about that the sound effects are pretty awful and the main screen you just hear wind sound effects pretty much non-stop the gameplay is not the best either but if you actually give it a chance and put the time in you will be rewarded with a pretty epic experience but that's just my opinion thanks for watching Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. I had a great time making it. This truly is one of my favorite CDI games. So hopefully you could actually get a copy for yourself. Unfortunately, it's a bit rare. So I want to know, what is your favorite CDI game? Because I'm working on a top 10 right now. However, it'll probably be a little bit before I finally get around to finishing it. Because... It's a CDI, and I could only play it for so much. So please leave me a comment down below. And until later, I will see you again, guys.